Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Keep Black here, and welcome back to another episode of Off the Cuff. Today we are picking back up on the Death T saga of Yu-Gi-Oh! with Death T1 Stardust Shootout. The next chapter picks up immediately following the last one that I left off on, where Yugi has just been challenged, or uh, rather dared, by Kaiba to go through Death T, or else. Sugoroku Muto, Grandpa Muto, is probably gonna die of a heart attack. What I find remarkable about the way that this chapter starts is the other Yugi does not emerge yet in spite of the incredible amount of stress that Yugi is clearly under right now. So already I'm like, oh my god, the anticipation buildup is going to kill me, isn't it? Little Yugi agrees to face Kaiba's challenge. Kaiba keeps his word and lets Grandpa out of that, uh, that battle box. And as Yugi rushes to his Grandpa's side and accepts the cards uh, that Grandpa just played against uh, Kaiba with, and he promises to beat Kaiba with those cards, we see some actual anger from Yugi. You're completely understandable, but it's like, this is this is kind of a first form, so it's like, ooh, he's, a he's actually kind of pissed off. That's kind of cool. Kaiba is, of course, not relenting and is shoving Yugi's nose in the fact that there's no way, there's no chance in hell he can ever beat him. Not a death T. He'll never survive it. We get some more badassery from Jonochi, who steps up and says, uh-uh, I'm not letting Yugi go in there alone, Kaiba. You're facing all of us, but Yugi's gonna kick your butt at that card game. Followed by Hiroto Honda, the man who has emerged from the audience with a child strapped to his back, apparently his sister's son, who was begging to be taken to Kaiba Land. Honda says he noticed things getting really weird from his seat in the crowd and decided, you know what, whatever's going on here, he's gonna help Yugi and Jinochi out. I love that Honda manages to be the most badass character in the room with a baby strapped to his back. There's this little panel of Yugi going, Honda, you're so... It's like, yes, he is. He is so. But without further ado, Kaiba tauntingly, jeeringly invites them into Death T1. There's no indication for what lies ahead of them, and so it's a big surprise when it turns out that the lady who was hired for the first attraction in Death T, and this is hilarious, Kaiba really is serious about this whole theme park of death being a legit theme park. Somebody at Kaiba Corp hired Anzu to be the attraction tour guide. <laughs> she clearly wasn't told what Death T actually is. And she explains that it's basically a laser tag setup. It's a 3v3 match, so Kaiba was clearly expecting Yugi's friends to show up. He's also completely hilarious throughout this whole thing. There's this great panel of after they've encountered Anzu and gotten the full rundown on what the game is. <laughs> Kaiba's looking at his screen and going, who the hell hired that girl? She's one of their friends! And on top of taking his position very seriously as the head of a theme park, Kaiba is also taking his revenge very, very seriously because he's hired three trained assassins to be facing Yugi, Jinochi, and Honda in this laser tag. The gang enters in, they got their vests, they got their guns, and it turns out it's, you know, it's a very stealth-style si setup. If you've ever played laser tag with a bunch of guys being dudes, you know what this is like. Of course, it's like ten times as intense because they already know something's up with this. Kaiba's, Kaiba's not gonna be playing around. And the tension from waiting becomes very quickly too much for Jonochi. <laughs> Jinochi is impatient, and also he's Jinochi, so he decides, you know what, screw this! I'm gonna run on top of the, the, the obstacles and just go kick one of the guys in the face, and he does. Again, I maintain that Jinochi has some of the best expressions in this manga. A pretty fast-paced action sequence ensues as the other team retaliates. The other two assassins start firing uh, pretty aggressively, and it devolves into an intense shootout where it turns out Honda is quite the marksman. But as things heat up, Honda realizes something is very wrong with this game. He gets by one of the other uh, the other team's guns and gets an electric shock. He calls for Yugi and Jinochi to make a tactical retreat, and they go and regroup. They are, and Honda throws down in, his gun in disgust and frustration as he reveals what he's realized about the game, that it is completely rigged. Yugi and his team have these, you know, fake toy guns that'll technically set, like, set the sensor off the way that laser tag always does. The assassin team has real laser guns, and if they get hit on their, uh, their sensors, they're dead. So once again, Honda the man comes up with the plan. For real, Honda's a total badass in this. He's an like absolute king. He's a good marksman. He's a good planner. He's kind of the coolest and most reliable guy on the team. It turns out Anzu's demonstration gun actually has a real laser inside of it, just like the other teams does. And so Honda straps his baby cousin to his back holding the gun and heads back into the fray full Squint Eastwood style 
to face these guys alone. He fakes out a surrender and just in time has Joji toss the gun up to him. He grabs it out of midair, pull, pulls a full John McClane and shoots the two guys remaining in like one blink of an eye. It's so freaking cool. He has one really cool one-liner about, haven't you guys seen any Western movies? The good guy's the one who always says the least. You know, it's kind of like the uh, the chapter leading into Death Tea where Jinochi has that fist fight in the alleyway with the guy with a knife, right? I love that in these chapters, like the kind of anticipatory build up to the what's gonna be like the real final battle. It's not really horror manga at the moment. It's more like really tense action. I love this stuff. Regardless of the individual genre variations from chapter to chapter, Takahashi does an incredible job keeping it all very cohesive and also, you know, changing up the pacing and the tone to suit what's going on. And the way that the characters are interacting with each other throughout all this stuff, it's just like, man, it's... You get really sucked into it. You really start rooting for the guys. But with Death T1 Stardust Shootout Laser Tag of Death complete, the gang moves on to Death T2. And guys, I'm gonna save that one for the next Off the Cuff. Thanks so much for listening and for watching, and I'll see you next time.